Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and in this vlog I'm going to be reading and reviewing some less common writing advice books. And I'm saying less common. One of them is in its 30th anniversary edition. So I mean more that I don't see it talked about on AuthorTube quite as much. But before I tell you the books that I'm going to be reading and reviewing this time, I do want to give a shout out to Laura Wrights and her Let's Talk Craft book club and also to Tamara Woods in her Writer's Workshop series. Both of them are reading and reviewing writing craft books. They'll tend to have live streams where they talk about it with other people so I will leave them both linked down below. And also this video is being sponsored by Campfire Blaze. I've partnered with them multiple times before. I love Campfire Blaze but I will talk about them later on in the video. So now let us get to the book shall we? I have five. <laughs> five that I'll be reading and reviewing this time. This whole series I should actually say was inspired by this book, Storyville. I picked it up from the library a while ago. It looked really cool. You can see it's a lot more like artistic too and it's meant to be an illustrated guide to writing fiction. I think it's mostly focused on beginners. That's something that as I was reading it I was kind of picking up on but it is a new title. A new book. <laughs> it was published in 2020 and I had some thoughts as I was reading it so I'm gonna kind of go over this one. Yes. Then on writing well this is the 30th anniversary edition. I did read this a while ago. I just keep regularly checking it out and what I want to do is I will eventually buy this one. So that's the slight spoiler for how I feel about this. And while this one was for like the beginning fiction writer, this one is for writing nonfiction. This one will also be a quick review as it's the New York Times Manual of Style and Usage. Upon a quick perusal you can see how it's kind of segmented out alphabetically. One of the things that I saw was ifs, ands, or buts where there is no apostrophes. But then it also has things like the Marshall Plan listed in here. So I figured I'd just go through a few things that I've personally had some questions over for a while. See how the New York Times is telling its journalists and its writers to handle it? Yeah. And finally I had a whole lot of writing craft books that I checked out once upon a time from the library ebook version they all expired. <laughs> but I am going to renew two in particular so that I can review them in this vlog and that is Steering the Craft, a 21st century guide to sailing the sea of story and I give you my body. How I write sex scenes. So we'll go more into the authors, more into the books as a whole as we go on. But yes five books. I'm excited. Let's start the journey shall we? With the beginner book. You know, I ended up taking more notes than I thought I would based off of the beginning, but... Alright, so after two peach pear spicy waters, I finally finished where I left off in Storyville. So, uh, my initial impression was correct basically. It, there's nothing that better demonstrates this than the tiny 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 revision section <laughs> which is supposed to be chapter four. Actually let's just go over the chapters. I think the inside flap really sets the mood for this. So there's the fiction writer, the fiction writing, the plot, and then the revision. And the revision by the way even with its three exercises takes up this amount of the book. <laughs> Which is only brought to the attention further because it keeps talking about how you know your first draft doesn't have to be perfect and reinforcing that message which is a phenomenal message but then to have a revision section that's so tiny after it really is just like this is a complete your first draft inspirational book. But I stand by thinking that this is genuinely a great book for beginners. It's not scary because I think writing a novel is inherently scary. You're creating something that does not exist and something quite large too. It's a scary thing. So I love the mixture of the illustrations by Evan Wondolowski along with John Dufresne's kind of organization and explanation. I will say that he really relies heavily on famous authors quotes which is really fun I think for a beginner book. I do want to go over a couple of quotes that I love. On page 10 it says one of the first rules that the fiction writer must learn is that the reader doesn't care about her. The reader says tell me about me. On page 15 
Planning to write is not writing. Telling your friends you're a writer is not writing. <laughs> there is these 10 commandments of writing fiction. Sit your ass in the chair, thou shalt not bore the reader. Remember to keep holy your writing time. Honor the lives of your characters. Thou shalt not be obscure. Thou shalt show and not tell. Thou shalt steal. Thou shalt rewrite and rewrite again and again. Which I found interesting given the revision section was so small, but alas. <laughs> thou shalt confront the human condition. Be sure that every death in a story means something. That is just Buffy banging against the <laughs> You're a silly dog is what you are. Uh-huh. A lot of the rules here are rules we've heard before. The show don't tell. The leave out anything that happened before the trouble begins. Kill your darlings. I'm sorry, murder your darlings. <laughs> leave out scenes that don't advance the plot. Reveal characters, express theme, etc. And it does talk about writer's block. Um, a little bit before that, I really liked this kind of interesting exercise you could do if you're feeling blocked. So if you're stuck and every idea you come up with seems like a cliche or it's too predictable, open a dictionary to any page. The first noun divide on the page or in the second column or wherever you decide is your unblocking word. Play with all its meaning for a few minutes and see what wild uncalculated connections they might have for your original problem. I don't know how many people have a dictionary still anymore so the advice could be potentially outdated though I think you could probably grab any book and do the same kind of idea just find a noun and go with it. Something that you don't have to come up with yourself but then you must use sort of thing to just get the brain going. I've never heard of that as an exercise before so I did appreciate that. In fact when talking about writer's block I liked the idea of not calling it writer's block thereby rendering it legitimate and powerful but instead just kind of calling it a gestation period. You know you're just thinking a little bit more about the problem. You're still working on it you're just thinking. It's gestating. <laughs> and this was actually one of my favorite two page spreads. <laughs> Keep calm and write on, but also Golden Girls reference talking about writer's block. It just, it's fun, it's fun. That's really how this could be summed up. It's a fun book. I think it's one of those things where it's like, if there was ever a writer who, you know, maybe a friend has wanted to write, has talked about writing, but hasn't taken the plunge. And usually I think that tends to me like, I just don't know how to. I think this could be good. In fact, you know. How far? Am I far off? Do 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 do. Oh, okay. Here we go. At the end of each chapter, even though there's only four chapters, they do have these exercises that I think are pretty cool. And then they give you like, you know, four pages to write in the book itself. I have a friend who thinks writing in books is basically a sin. She absolutely hates it. But for all other people, I think this is great. <laughs> he spends a long while talking about first drafts and actually shows you a picture of his first draft, which I really appreciate. To plug myself again, I did write a short story. It was my collaboration project with Ara from Bentley House Mini. So I showed every draft process from the zero draft to the first draft to the final draft and even in between. So I will link that again down below. You can check that out. Besides the fun quotes, the illustrations also help to kind of show easily what a first draft should have what a first draft isn't, blah, blah, blah. Again, just nice, easy to digest information. Also including a visual on the hero's journey, kind of segmented off, and a whole two pages on openings that the author enjoyed. And then closing examples a few pages later. I always love diagrams like these. I've used this several times in videos when I'm trying to explain what I'm doing. So anyways, ta-da. It's nice, it's easy to understand. Hooray. So other than inspiration, I don't personally feel like I got a whole lot out of this book, but I've also written many first drafts. And in fact, if there had been a longer revision section, that's probably the part that I need more help with. But even then, you know, this isn't uh, doing anything new for me, you know, it's just making a pretty version and giving me some quotes, which I like, um, but I wouldn't buy this book or anything. I wouldn't put it up on my shelves. Still, potentially a good gift. Yes. I'm glad I checked it out. The cover, awesome. That's what first made me interested in graphics. So thank you, John, and thank you, Evan. <laughs> and now we shall put this on the current library shelf situation. What are y'all doing? Jeez. And we are going to take a quick writing break. I mean, really, it's more like an editing break for my writing and then edit later. <laughs> New process I'm trying out. Does that work? You can see my finished spiky water and my beer I just caught. 
So I wrote this one this morning. It's actually a really short chapter. It's like 1300 words or so. My outline notes. Let's do this. Just a little bit of highlight as I still need to come up with some names, but 1,543 words. Now before we move on to the other books, I do want to go ahead and give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Campfire Blaze. If you haven't heard of Campfire Blaze before, it is like a world building, drafting, revising, editing, encyclopedia storing tool all based in the cloud. You can do everything in it. You have a place to store all of your characters, upload images, build relationship webs. You can create narrative timelines, drag and drop with story events filled in, which you can then link back to your characters. And you can also upload maps, tag locations, create cultures and worlds and species and languages. You can do a lot. They're also constantly introducing new elements or introducing patches. In May, they actually introduced the research modules so you can upload PDFs and actually make notes along the way for the PDF. Keep everything in one central location. All of the various tabs, I may or may not have 20 open right now, <laughs> can be stored in there so that you never lose your research. I'm really excited to attempt the collaboration feature with my brother, this Camp NaNoWriMo as we will be co-writing a project. But otherwise, I'm very happy that my stories and my characters and my worlds are kept completely private. No one else has access to them. And the best part of all is that it can be completely free to use Campfire Blaze. You are only limited in the number of entries you have per module that you're not paying for. Or if you want unlimited access to only one or two modules, you only have to pay for those. I cannot rave about Campfire Blaze enough. So if you want to check them out, try for free. I will leave a link down below in the description box. And thank you once again to Campfire Blaze for sponsoring this video. And now back to the books. All right. All of these books are due back to the library, so I might have been a little bit too overzealous in reading five. <laughs> but I want to go over this one. So even though this is more of a book about like an index of words and an index of things, in fact, finally a word about the manual, it is self-indexing. I did read the foreword, it's only like five pages, but there's one part that really stood out to me. In approaching the mechanics of usage and grammar, this manual reflects the Times impression of its educated and sophisticated readership. Traditional, but not tradition bound. And it talks about evolving usage. This is one of my absolute favorite things about writing and words in general is just how they change over the years. I have, you know, a few things that bother me that I'm worried that have become part of just our general lexicon. Namely for me, I could care less instead of I couldn't care less. It's fine. But otherwise, I love how communication evolves. I think that is just one of the coolest things about being a human or seeing like human trends over time. So anyways, I like that they acknowledged it while still giving you a manual. What's interesting to me is as they have all of these items, they talk about El Nino or La Nina, El Salvador, Elisa Palace without the email. So they're explaining what some of this is. And then some of them, they don't explain at all, but just how you're supposed to capitalize it. And then they have embarrassment, which I think is meant because it is a frequently misspelled word. So they put it in there. Anyways, immigrate versus immigrate. That's a tough one. Copyright patent, trademark, service mark. <laughs> I actually think you could make a really fun like writing prompt out of just flipping through the pages but for the most part this is not a necessary item for the fiction writer to have at their disposal uh but fun <laughs> it is cute seeing how short x is and z is though <laughs> and at the very back they have these standard proofreading marks an example of a marked up proof so that's it done and you, I will be buying a copy of online. 
Now the next book I wanted to read was I Give You My Body by Diana Galbadon, most famously known for the hugely popular Outlander series, which admittedly I have not read. And truthfully, everything I know about that series I have learned about through booktube. <laughs> I do know that it is very heavy on the sex though. And as someone who writes romance, I was intrigued by what I might be able to glean from this book. But also for the first time in like three years, I was gonna get to hang out with my brothers all at the same time. I got to see them both individually, but not all of us together. So we had almost the entire family out there, significant others included. We were just missing one person. And we took a family trip to Lake Tahoe. Now we're all vaccinated. We've all been vaccinated for a while. And it was an incredible trip. I made the promise to myself that I would not work while I was on the trip. But at first I was like, well, I could still read. Reading and reviewing doesn't feel quite like work, right? But then as I pulled up the book on the plane, after the table of contents, I was met with a slightly more graphic image than I wanted to have my seatmate see. And then once I was actually in Tahoe, I was just so busy and it was so much fun and it was so incredible and lovely. And it was nice to have a break and yeah. So I just took some notes on the quick version and now I'm on the one hour expanded guide to writing sex scenes with both detailed striking examples and entertaining footnotes. So as I'm already 6% through the book and that took almost no time to read that first section even with the notes I took, I do believe it probably only takes an hour to read this book. Um, so I'm really curious how it goes. I appreciated the examples early on to like one example to reinforce each of her main points in the five minute version. So let's get a quick drink. And get back to the reading. Thank you for joining me, Alvin. I had to move my phone because you. Yeah. 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 I moved locations because the animals were being rowdy. Mm -hmm. They have joined me. What do you think, baby girl? Huh? <laughs> yeah? Oh, do you see a cat? Oh, it's you? Oh. <laughs> I'll get it. Okay, as you can tell from my still slightly red face, my exercise glow, my post-exercise glow. I just finished a walk in the Texas heat, but I finished reading Diana's book. I really loved it. I did check to see if you could buy a paperback copy and I couldn't find it anywhere. So something to note, I might buy it online later and just keep the ebook copy. I think the other writing ebook I have is Chris's 5,000 words per hour book. So it would be in good company. Besides On Writing Well, which I already knew I wanted to have my own physical <laughs> copy of the 30th anniversary edition, bark bark. I did check the Barnes and Noble website and I checked my local store and fingers crossed, Steering the Craft is in stock as well. So I had already read the first like introduction to it and just the intro itself, I think is a great example of what a writing advice book should be. Just how to the point, but at the same time lyrical it manages to be. So I'm gonna pick that one up as well. Hopefully. Hiya. Yeah.
I recognize that book. Honestly though, I would recommend I give you my body to more people than just those who write sex scenes or want to write sex scenes. I think there was a lot of really good advice in here. One of the things I really appreciated actually came near the very end of the book and I quote, that silly aphorism, write what you know, would be much better rephrased as don't write about stuff you don't know about yet but you can find out about things you don't know. Other general things that I really appreciated was her talk about focus. So she at first puts it in terms of like, uh, thinking about it as a screenplay or like what you see in movies. But then she has an explanation for how the focus can be pulled back and then zoomed back in. Amazing. In quotes, Focus is mechanical. You don't want to keep the same focal length all the way through a scene. It's tiring to the mental eye. And that's something that I've always thought, but I couldn't really, I didn't know how to put that into words. You know, when I'm imagining a scene, I'm picturing it visually. That's how I personally see the stories first. And then it's almost like I'm telling it back to myself from what I see. But something I'm working to improve is that kind of focal length and pulling in and out. So it was just really cool to see that in the book. I will say this book was so heavy on the examples, which at times like she put, you know, tens, 20 pages at a time, chunks of her own work from the Outlander series mostly into the book to show you an example. But it was phenomenal, amazing. In fact, at one point she has a bit where she takes a passage and she shows you the example and then she goes back to it and puts in like parentheses and bars how she's breaking down the scene. So then the scene will continue and she'll put some more. And I was like, this is phenomenal. <laughs> it is risque at times. Not sure what else you expect from a book called I Give You My Body, but she does make a point that the difference between bad writing in general and bad writing about sex is that bad writing about sex is hilarious. <laughs> they have tons of like random contests that you can find that she references throughout the book for the worst sex scenes written and published that year. Amazing. But ultimately, I think the biggest takeaway from this is that character is the most important. So a sex scene is not really just a sex scene. It's to move the character forward, to move the plot forward. It can be a culmination, but she makes a huge point in saying that you should not be able to substitute any random two characters and have the scene remain the same. You haven't done your job then. The point of this sex scene is that only these two characters can be having this moment together. And it talks about dialogue, the senses, like it's, this was actually a pretty great book. I kind of went into it I, I don't know what my expectations were again I have not read Outlander one of the chapter titles was how to have sex like a gay man and she's a straight woman and so I was kind of like eh. but then the subtitle made it make more sense I think it was more sensational than it needed to be but such as the way of titling things the actual content was really good but the book does end off with a whole appendix that someone had corralled all the sex scenes in her Outlander series it was so funny. Like I just kept tabbing over on the ebook. I was like, surely this will end. Surely we're coming close. Nope. <laughs> I ended up taking, you know, I'd say a healthy amount of notes. The purple was kind of my thoughts along the way, but also any stars for something that I found exceptional. And ultimately I would recommend this book. But now that I have steering the craft in a physical copy and a little cappuccino to match, you know, Kind of. It's time to get to reading. There's only 141 pages in here and you can see that that's partially the glossary. Somewhere in here, I have my receipt. Aha, you can get me some free cookies. <laughs> Let's do this. I accidentally pulled a mosquito in my book. <laughs> but to be fair, it got me first said mosquito cage marks the end of the introduction which of course i already have a few thoughts about then is playing with my hair i love that she talks about having people be either a lone navigator or part of a mutinous crew whether you're using the exercises by yourself or like with a group all of this was born from her kind of leading these small group workshops and i absolutely love that so the other two things i want to note i dog here to page it's my book, don't come at me. <laughs> because I've recently been interested in what is art, she starts, there's luck in art and there's the gift. 
can't earn that, but you can learn skill. You can earn it. You can learn to deserve your gift, which I think is really wonderful. It's something that I'm working on is rather than telling someone that they're so talented, be like they're so skilled, which is, you know, they are so talented. They are incredible, but they've also worked really hard at it. So I try and include both. It continues on. I'm not going to discuss writing as self-expression, as therapy, or as a spiritual adventure. It can be these things, but first of all, and then and two, it is an art, a craft, a making, and that is the joy of it. Ho oh, oh. I'm gonna try and block out the mosquito, but she talks about how to be a good writer, you need to read a lot. But I love this extra point she makes, which is if you don't read widely or read only writers in fashion at the moment, you'll have a limited idea of what can be done with the English language. Also, I would just like to note how much I love these setup. <laughs> of these chapters so anyways i actually made it through the sound of your writing the first time i read this book so anyways it's just a nice refresher here and a little bit of coffee left the sound of the language is where it all begins the test of a sentence is does it sound right As compared to I give you my body. Ursula uses examples from a lot of different writers, which I freaking love because oftentimes what I find in writing craft books is that they'll give you one or two examples, but they're not different enough for me to understand the point the writer's really trying to make. And that's highlighted even more here. She has four examples in the chapter of these musical rhythms and dramatic phrasing silly then of dialectical cadences etc and honestly the fourth example didn't really speak to me if that had been the only example even though i read them all aloud as ursula was telling us to it wouldn't have really sank in but the first three really stood out to me and i totally got what she was saying so i'll believe her on the fourth which is interesting because of course for as beautiful as writing can be sometimes, it's not always going to connect with everyone. So that's why I love that she had four very different examples. And I think it takes a very smart writer to be able to distinguish between all four and make the points that she was trying to make. So this is gonna be gush fast, okay. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, kitty cat? <laughs> I also do really want to attempt the exercises at some point. I think they'll be really helpful. So I don't know if I want to make that like a separate video, a separate vlog at some point, or go like through the whole book and do one video for one exercise. But anyways, it's very fun. Maybe a live stream or something in the future. And now we are into punctuation and grammar. Okay, holy shit, this book is freaking amazing. <laughs> Save the Cat Rides and Hold took over author tube. I think this one needs to be next. Besides Ursula K. Le Guin just being a genius, speculative fiction genius, she wrote poetry too, like she's incredible. This book is amazing. It truly is all about the craft of writing and the craft of storytelling. So whereas Save the Cat Rides novel tends to be about like, and you know how to plot out or structure a story. This one is about the words and it's very purposeful and I loved it. Also very short. I'm so excited to use this as an actual like guide. You can see I dog here the ever living shit out of this book. <laughs> but oh my goodness. I gave up on writing notes in favor of the dog gear method, but uh, because overall there'd just be too much, I'm going to pick and choose at random. <laughs> First off, I love her saying that this is essentially a workbook. I already kind of talked about this, but I'm planning to go back over it and genuinely treat it as a workbook. <laughs> at first I was just spitballing ideas, but now it's a thing. I'm gonna have to do it. It's just incredible. <laughs> the way that she's able to cover so many things in just like 140 pages is phenomenal. Like at one point she even mentions classism and grammar usage. It's these little things that she's able to sneak in and still feel like the topic was covered Covered. Much like I give you my body, this has a surplus of examples, which I love. 
love she also breaks down multiple scenes every single chapter okay every single chapter has a, an activity to try and almost all of them have very lengthy examples and it helps so much something i found interesting was that she talked about imitation several times and she's sure to point out the difference between plagiarizing something and just merely imitating it and she says it's interesting for her because in her poetry you know just general poetry with teachers they tend to have a section where it's like okay attempt this in the vein of a famous poet it, you imitate this whereas that's kind of frowned upon in novel writing whereas ursula is saying no do it no really just try it. It is illuminating. And so you're going to end up writing all of these different kind of short passages if you do all of the exercises. And the very last one at the end is like, take a 400 word piece and you got to cut it in half, literally. And it's all to prove a point. And I just, oh my God. One of the bits I especially love that I had not ever heard put in this way is on adjectives and adverbs. And this is actually how she opens up the chapter. When the quality that the adverb indicates can be put into the verb itself, they ran quickly equals they raised or the quality the adjective indicates can be put in the noun itself, a growling voice equals a growl. The prose will be cleaner, more intense, more vivid. Now I'd always heard that qualifiers are bad. Lots of us have read on Ready by Stephen King and he has some thoughts and feelings about adverbs. He's not the only one. And so I've heard this message before about how the, you don't want the qualifiers, you want the more intense word, but the actual explanation done so quickly makes a lot more sense to me. And then those of us who are brought up to be unaggressive in comfort in conversation are liable to use qualifiers, adjectives and adverbs such as rather, a little, which soften or weaken the words they modify. In conversations, they're okay. In written prose, they're bloodsuckers, ticks. You have to dig them out right away. The ticks I myself am plagued by are kind of, sort of, and just, and always, always vary. Anyways, completely makes sense to me. <laughs> I loved having that as an explanation and actually it builds in what Ursula says a lot of the time. She's making a distinction between our speaking voice and our written voice. Ever present is the read the work aloud because this is all about the craft and all about the flow of something that is so incredibly important. And I don't frankly have enough time to go through each and everything that I loved about this, but I will reread it. It's only 140 pages. It goes by very quickly. I, however, want to end off with the final bit, which is the peer group workshop. And she has advice on the members manuscripts, like what to send out, everyone reading and critiquing the rotation. But I dog eared this bit on protocol, which is each critique should be brief without interruption from anyone else. Concerning important aspects of the piece, trivial quibbles should be written on them as impersonal. Your knowledge of the author's character or intentions is absolutely irrelevant. It's the writing that's under discussion, not the writer. Even if the piece is autobiographical, say the narrator, not you. And then there's a whole bunch more, like it continues, but Oh my gosh. There's finally a bit on how to be critiqued, like how to accept the criticism. And I wish I could give that to every single writer by this book. All right, and so now we need to finish off just by a very quick review of On Writing Well. I won't be reading it during this vlog as I've already read most of it. I've actually reread the same bits and I keep soaking in different information, but I do wanna say in a similar vein how much I love this book. <laughs> Lots of examples. It also is incredibly comprehensive when it's talking about On Writing Well, the classic guide to writing nonfiction. It's not joking. It talks about writing memoir, travel writing, sports, interviewing people. It is very comprehensive and I personally love William's voice. I enjoy kind of listening to him as, as the reader. One of my favorite things is that he has an example really early on where he's showing what the first edition of this book looked like and how he has since edited it and changed it up to this 30th anniversary edition point. And he makes it clear that of course in the first edition it had already gone through edits and revisions and all of the other things it's supposed to. He's just over the years found a better way to clean it up and you really can tell the difference. So anyways, Little takeaways from this are how the last sentence in every paragraph should be snappy. Obviously you want all of your writing to be as wonderful as you can make it, but especially those last sentences because each sentence acts as a hook to keep the reader reading. I also love that he makes the point that if you lose the reader to bad writing, that's a you fail. But if you lose the reader to a mismatch of humor, that's a just whatever, you know, that happens. And I think that off the back of early on, one of the examples in this where I said I connected with three of the four examples, but the fourth one just didn't do anything for me personally. It's a perfect example of this message. And it's something that's helped me a lot. It's a little bit more freeing to think that, you know, I'm gonna make the writing as good as I possibly can. And some people are still not going to hear it the way I want them to hear it. They're still just not gonna think I'm funny. They're not gonna think I'm compelling. And, that's okay. I'm gonna do my job, but much like these videos that I make, not everyone's gonna like them. If you 
at all are interested in nonfiction, I would recommend this book. It also has plenty of craft advice, so I think people who write exclusively fiction could get something out of this as well, but certainly nonfiction writers. But that is gonna be it for me. Thank you once again to Campfire Blaze for sponsoring this video, and please do comment down below and let me know what the most recent writing craft book you've read is. Let me know if you love any kind of underrated writing craft book, especially in the world of authortube. I feel like we have the same sort of books circulating around and that's not dogging on those books. They're great. But I would love to hear about it. Also let me know if there's any writing craft books that you just absolutely love. Not underrated. If you stand by Save the Cat Writes a Novel, why is that? Why is it your favorite writing craft book? And also let me know if you have any books that you'd like me to read for the next installation of this writing craft reading vlog whatever series. Let me know if you have a better name for that too. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you all with a new one very soon. Bye! Oh, you can't see that. That silly aphorma aphorism? Because I've recently been, been because I've recently, oh.